Today we install this Creality 1.5 silent mainboard on this Ender 3. This video probably can't come at a worse time. I am in the middle of making a series of videos on the Ender 3 based on a new user's experience. This video has nothing to do with that series. It comes out of necessity. While I was testing something on my original Ender 3 right here, the one that I've been abusing for over a year now, I started seeing issues with my extruder. Come to find out, it's likely related to the driver on the board. So I thought I'd just go ahead and upgrade the board. Well, while I was looking for a new board for my Ender 3, I realized that most of the boards out there right now are the silent version. So I thought we'd go ahead and upgrade the board to this 1.1.5 version that has trinamic drivers, and we just walk through all of that step by step. But let's start this video by taking a look at this printer's current configuration. And here's just to give you an idea of what the printer does with the bad driver. If you take a look at the extruder when it tries to do moves, it just sits there and skips. And here I've removed the extruder cable so the motor doesn't turn and make that grinding noise, but I just want to give you an idea of how loud the printer is before we upgrade to the new board. And if you're seeing issues like that on your 3D printer, the first thing that I recommend checking is the reference voltage of that driver. On a lot of different 3D printer main boards, you're going to have the driver, and then right next to that, you're going to have this potentiometer right here. That allows you to adjust the reference voltage to get a little more current to drive your motor. If it's too low, you might see stuttering problems like we just saw, or if it's too high, you might overheat and see similar issues. To check that reference voltage, you can use a multimeter. You need to use the negative lead on the board. I like to use the one with the power in right back here on the Ender 3 board. And then you can use your positive lead on the center of that potentiometer. Be careful, you do have to have the power on. You don't want to short anything out. You at least need USB power to check this reference voltage. For a starting point on most 3D printers with NEMA 17 motors, I like to start anywhere between 700 and 800 millivolts. You don't really want to rely on the reference voltage to adjust your driver. You need to go by the model of motor you're using and the amount of torque that you need. If you're seeing issues with skipping, you might want to turn it up a bit. If the driver or the motor is getting too hot, you're going to need to turn it down. But that all depends on your type of motor and your model of 3D printer. If you do need to change the reference voltage on your printer, I highly recommend you use a ceramic screwdriver like this so you don't short anything out while you're in there adjusting. So in my case, the reference voltage was fine, but the extruder still doesn't work. So the next thing I would test is the motor and the cable. And the easiest way to do that is to move the non-functioning motor to a motor that you know works. So we'll swap the extruder cable over to the Z and check it that way. So with the printer powered off, I'm just going to remove the extruder cable and I'm going to remove the Z cable. I know the Z axis works correctly, so I'm just going to move the extruder wire over to the Z axis. This way we're going to test to see the motor cable is still good and the extruder motor is still good. So with the extruder cable swapped over to the Z plug, I'm just going to move the Z axis up a bit. And the extruder motor is turning just as smooth as can be. No issues there. So with this test, now we know our stepper for our extruder is good and so is the cable. So we know we have enough current for the driver, the cable's still good, and the extruder motor still works. So that pretty much leaves us with one thing. We have an issue on the main board. And with this type of board, without the removable stepper drivers, it's pretty much just easiest to swap out the whole thing. Now remember when troubleshooting an extruder issue, sometimes you have a feature called prevent cold extrusion. This keeps you from turning the extruder motor if the hot end isn't up to temp. That's usually around 170 C. So before you start troubleshooting, go ahead and preheat, even if you don't have this feature, just to make sure. That's going to save you a lot of headache. So let's go ahead and get started removing the old board so we can swap in the new one. Now the first thing you need to do is remove the cover. I've already taken mine off, but there's two screws here in the front. They're M3, and there's a little longer M3 screw here in the back. You get to the front two with the bed all the way back, and then you can push the bed all the way forward and get to that back one. Now before you start removing wires, I recommend you take quite a few pictures of this with your cell phone or you get in here and make some labels. 
A lot of these wires are labeled pretty well already, but you could add a few extra just to make sure you know where everything goes. Now you could do this one wire at a time, one connector at a time, just moving from the old board to the new board slowly, but there's some things I want to show you inside here that it's going to be a little hard to do that if we do it with that method. So just update your documentation well, put some labels on there, take some pictures, and you should be just fine. It's not that complicated. So basically now I'm just going to unplug everything from the board. There is hot glue on a lot of these connectors, but you can usually get them free with just a razor blade. Now all the wires are off. We should just have a couple of screws to take this thing apart. We've got one here, one back here, one over here, and one kind of in the center right there. And just out of curiosity on the old board, I took one of the heat sinks off to see what type of driver they were using. It is a 4988. This is version 1.1.2 of this board. Now with the board out, let's take a look. On the stock inner 3, you're going to have three separate sections of wire. You're going to have everything that goes to the bed right here, everything that goes to the hot end carriage, your fan, heater, thermistors, and then you're going to have everything else, which is your motors, your LCD cable, and your power wires. Now on the wires that support your bed and the input voltage, most of the time they're going to be soldered and then they're going to be smashed flat underneath that terminal. If you're going to pull all this apart anyway, I recommend that you put ferrules on the ends of all of these wires. And I would put those on anything that's just bare wire going into a terminal. Use the correct size, of course. And the ferrule connectors look like this. If you do a lot of 3D printing projects, you might want to get some of these and the tool for putting them on. Link in the description if you need to know what these are. But I'm going to install these on all the wires that don't have a connector already. I'll just show you how to do one of these. It's pretty self-explanatory. We're going to cut the soldered tip off. And the power wire is 16 gauge, so we're going to strip it back roughly the length of the metal part on the ferrule. Like so. Then you can slide the ferrule on for a 16 gauge wire. This is a 1.5 millimeter ferrule. Make sure the outside of the ferrule is all the way down over the insulation of the wire. And then you can crimp it with your four-sided crimper. Just like that. Now I'm going to go through and do the power wires, the bed wires, the ones for the heater on the cartridge, and the ones for the hot end fan. All our ferrules are on. We can go ahead and move all these wires out of the way and slide our new board in. The hardest ones to put on when the board is installed is the input voltage. So I just go ahead and do that while the board is out. So the outside terminal is the negative one. Make sure you hold on to the actual green terminal part and get it nice and snug. And the other side is the positive one. With that connected, we can go ahead and slide it in. It sets just like that, and we can go ahead and put our screws back in. One up there by the SD card, one out here in the middle, one back here in between the X and Y motor plug, and one back here close to the input power. And now we can put the cables back on. We've got our X motor cable right there, our Y motor cable, our Z motor cable, our E motor cable, our hot end thermistor up here in the front left corner, our bed thermistor next to that, the Z end stop next to that, Y end stop next to that, X end stop. Our part fan goes right here, the one in front of the end stop row. And then the main board cooling fan that's on the lid goes next to the one on the row, right behind that one, right here. The first set of terminals right here, that's the hot end heater. You don't have to worry about polarity, doesn't matter which wire goes where. Just make sure you get those terminal screws nice and snug. The center set of terminals right here support the bed. These don't have polarity either, but it does have one red and one black wire. So I'm going to go ahead and put them how they should be. Your positive should be on this side, negative on this side. Red one there. Again, these are the most important ones to make sure you get them nice and tight. Black and red one there. And this last one right here is a constant 12 volts. We parked the hot end fan right here. So that was the negative terminal. And the one closest to the power input terminal is the positive one. And last but not least, we can plug in the LCD screen. Right there. And the wiring is all done. Now before we put the cover back on, let's boot up and see what we got. Make sure everything works. We'll power on. Screen came on. That's a good sign. The thermistors are reading correctly. It does say it's an Ender 3. Now remember, this board has been pre-installed with Marlin. It should be configured correctly for an Ender 3. It is an Ender 3 board, 
but we definitely want to check a few things. Let's head into the menu. Let's go to about printer. And we have Marlin 1.1.8. And I think that's pretty standard for them to install on a lot of these replacement boards. And just for fun, on the new board off of one of the drivers, I pulled the heatsink, and you can see it's a Trinamic 2208. With the heatsink replaced, I'm comfortable we can go ahead and put the cover back on. And as far as hardware goes, that's all there is to it. And that is the biggest advantage of the Creality board. When you get the Creality board, it's a direct replacement for a stock Ender 3. Now, if you've made upgrades and made changes in the firmware, you're going to have to go back and do that on the new board. But if it's just a stock Ender, you should be all set. Now, mine is pretty much stock except for the EZR extruder, but even the E-steps on the EZR are really close to the stock setup. But let's head into Pronderface and just take a look at what the settings are currently, just to make sure. So we can connect up. We're connected in 11.5200 baud rate. It's telling us it's using Marlin 1.1.8. And if we do an M503, that's going to give us everything that's in EEPROM. And you can see this M906 command down here. That's telling us that those 2208 drivers are set up UART controlled, so we can control the voltage with a command. M906, XYZ, or E0 will allow you to set the driver current right in the firmware from command line. And that can be a really handy feature, but these defaults for now should be good. With that said, I've looked around on the Creality GitHub, and I can't find a version of Marlin that utilizes this board. All these boards should be configured as a Melzi, but there's going to have to be one of these that allows you to configure those 2208s to be able to be controlled by UART mode. So remember that if you're going to try to upgrade your firmware. Now if you want to upgrade this board to Marlin, you should be able to get a configuration that works with 2208s. You will still have to use that Creality board setting that's in Marlin, but you can probably use that Ender 3 example that comes with Marlin now and just tailor it towards the 2208s. The pins should be somewhat correct, but I really don't know for sure. I haven't tried it yet. Creality also states that these boards have bootloaders, so you don't have to do that if you're trying to upgrade to Marlin. I don't know a lot about the upgrade process yet, maybe we'll try that in the future. And now that our install is complete, let's see just how silent these steppers really are. And as you can see, the printer is a lot quieter. Pretty much the only thing you can hear now is fan noise. So is this board worth the $38 US price tag from Creality? Well, it is a direct swap-in replacement, and it is quite the upgrade. The printer is a lot quieter. You don't have to alter firmware, and it's ready to go for a stock Ender 3. But there are some alternatives. You can get an SKR mini board for $27 US, and it has a 32-bit processor, where this board still has the old 128. So the SKR board is going to be more affordable, and it's going to give you more options when you're upgrading going forward. It'll have a lot more memory to support the changes you want to make. So definitely take that into account when you're considering an upgraded board for your Creality product. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.